Hey guys, it's 5.45 a.m. here, Bogota time, South America, Colombia with an O. And we're ready to leave. We're waiting for a transport to arrive any minute now. We're going to be driving 1,000 miles from Bogota to the northernmost point in Colombia, which is El Cabo de la Vela and Punta Gallinas. In, if, you, if we translate that, it's like point chicken. I've had the opportunity of traveling all around the world seeing a lot of new places with my championship, with the World Endurance Championship. I'm super, super excited. I am Colombian and I'm gonna get to discover my own country, my own culture. This is a week of preseason training that starts right now. Leaving Bogota was a bit treacherous. There was a, a big mountain pass with really tight roads that we had to that we had to pass, and it was a, a bit slow. But after that, we got into the valley of the Magdalena River, and it's everything got gets a lot flatter and a lot smoother, and it's a lot uh, faster to to eat up the miles. So we did that through the night. Arrived here quite late at midnight or so, a bit more. Mi nombre es Adalberto Gómez, tengo 15 años y estamos en el Cabo de la Vela. Then in the morning, on the first day, it was more or less just exploring the surroundings on the bikes. We got on the bikes and went around to explore the, the nearby mountains and the nearby flats. Bueno, el Cabo de la Vela en Colombia es un resguardo indígena, es uno de los lugares que tiene la condición del clima perfecto para hacer kitesurf. One of the really cool things here is all the kids that kite. They've they've all grown around the sport, practicándolo muy bien, están trabajando de kite, se les brindó una oportunidad de vida sostenible a ellos sin planearlo porque en realidad no fue planeado. Once they're good with the kite, once they're good with language, then all these kids when they're 13, 14 years old, they start giving lessons to all the tourists. Son muy buenos ellos, hay que empezar a educarlos con relación de pronto al manejo de basura y enseñarles un poquito de inglés porque es importante, esto está muy turístico y ellos viven del turismo cuando no están haciendo kite por lo general están en el colegio o la mayoría de, de ellos tienen hospedajes en sus casas y viven del turismo cuando no hay kite. La vida en el Cabo de la Vela para mí no ha sido ni tan fácil ni tan difícil porque primero que todo tengo de apoyo el kite para salir adelante y bueno anteriormente no tenía cómo defenderme pues solo en la escuela y me apoyaba mi mamá pues ahora me apoya todo el mundo en el cabo y con este deporte vamos a ver qué logramos y salimos adelante en el cay hago a veces salto hago el back roll front roll kailu bailo kailu rally eh, front desenganchado kiteboarding is a really cool sport in the aspect that it's always teaching you new things and I think once you stop learning is when you start to get old. And one of the good things about kiteboarding is that you will never stop learning and you will never stop pushing yourself to learn new things. I think challenging your mind constantly is something that is very important for your body to adapt and your mind to adapt to any circumstance in life quicker. So in my racing, for example, if it starts raining all of a sudden, if I'm able to adapt to the rain and to the track, uh, to the track grip, and all of this a lot faster than everyone else, I get an advantage. And I think, as as far-fetched as it might sound, learning new things on the kite gives me an advantage when the track goes from wet to dry, or when just anything changes with the car, just because I'm able to adapt a lot quicker to any kind of circumstance, because I'm keeping my mind sharp with very different things at all times. 
So not only with the kite, with the motorcycle. I'm not a great motorcycle rider, but I've been advancing slowly and I've been learning slowly. I started riding motorcycles maybe one or two years ago. So all, all of these learning things have really helped me to, to keep my mind sharp throughout the years. Quiero estudiar idiomas porque el inglés me gusta y aquí en el Cabo vienen muchos extranjeros. Entonces muy poca gente en el Cabo se defiende con el inglés. Creo que el único guayú que hasta el momento más o menos se defiende en el inglés soy yo y mi hermano. All right, so here in El Cabo de la Vela and just the whole Guajira in general, there's a, a really big problem with uh, sweet water, just fresh water. By day, you're only allowed to get one bucket of water, which is maybe like two gallons of water to shower. There is not a lot of it. You cannot drink the water they give you. You can only drink bottled water and you brush your teeth with bottled water. So it's very, it's a very humbling experience and just being here for, for a week makes you appreciate all this that you normally take for granted. Okay, after spending two days in El Cabo de la Vela, we hit the road to Punta Gallinas. Punta Gallinas is the northernmost point in all of South America. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous, magical place. It takes around five hours to get there by car. In distance, it might only be around 40 miles, but the road is really, really rough. Salir del Cabo a Punta Gallinas es algo mucho más complejo. Y es complejo porque el terreno cambia dependiendo cómo esté el clima. Si llueve, es imposible entrar a Punta Gallinas. Y es eh, súper importante conocer o tener un guía y así tenga uno la ruta en GPS, el terreno cambia, el desierto cambia. Son terrenos que son muy diferentes a los terrenos que usualmente los pilotos eh, manejamos, que son terrenos muy sueltos, tienen demasiada piedra y hay posibilidad de cometer un error o, o, o tener un accidente. Always get a guide if you want to go there. And then we arrive at the sand dunes like at around 4 or 5 p.m. We had two hours of sunlight to play with and it was just a magical place, the most magical sunset, riding the bikes, riding with the baracos up and down. It was, it was really surreal experience. The sand dunes are really special on the bike. You get to, you get to really slide it, you get to play around with it without, you know, there's no trees, there's no rocks, there's nothing unpredictable there. So you get to really play around with it and really get comfortable with the bike and uh, it was just incredible amount of fun. We got some really, really cool shots and I'm sure that uh, you guys are gonna like it.